Good morning, good morning, good morning. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? How thankful I am feeling today to be able to be in the Father's house. I'm thankful for his presence. I'm thankful for his mercy and for his guidance. Today, we Friday, we, we honored our veterans, and, and we want to do that as a body of Christ. So can I ask all of our veterans to please stand this morning? We would like to acknowledge you with a round of applause for your service to your country. And if you'll remain standing, if everyone else will stand, we're going to sing America the Beautiful this morning.
world and on this earth may change. But I tell you what, for the Christian, one thing remains, and that is our security in the name of Jesus Christ and the cross on which he died to buy our sins and to buy our pardon. And that blood shed for me, I don't know about you today, but it excites me. The sacrifice that he made for me so long ago that keeps me today. And because he lives, I can live. Amen? And you can live. Accept him today. Make that choice. Let's start with the chorus.
you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, probably don't know what's going on. If you do, it don't do you much good. But if you're a child of God, You're blessed. You're benefited. Thursday night in revival, we preached on the end is coming. There was a hush that went over that congregation as people thought about the end. Some weren't ready. Are you? Ready or not, when he comes, better get ready. So we go to prayer. Let's go thanking the Lord that we can be ready and we can know it. We can have that blessed assurance. So we go to prayer, Regina Thornton. Good to see Martha uh, Meadows back in service and recovering. And my buddy John. And to see him. And uh, Diana Jarrett has some surgery tomorrow. I want to remember her, Roger Collier's mother. And then uh, I've got a slip of paper handed to me here. John Smith, not saved, uh, stomach cancer, taking chemo and headed back to the hospital. Henry, Rose Persinger's brother, very ill, and then of course uh, Rose and Jim in need of prayer. Uh, I doubt if there's a family that's not standing in the need of prayer. We all have issues. And uh, somebody said, Pastor, what are you doing with a cane? I said, well, I didn't like sliding across that blacktop last week. And me weighing 300 pounds and Brenda 115, I figured she probably couldn't get me up. So, we're getting older, aren't we? We need the great physician. So we go to prayer this morning. Let's remember our nation. It's going through trying times. Let's pray for it. Pray for our president. Pray for our school systems. They need it. And pray for the Lord's church. Aren't you glad that you're part of the church? And I don't know what's going on in your home or in your marriage. But if you have a need, he has the answer. And as the choir sings that chorus, feel free to come. just bow our heads in prayer. Jesus, we, we are so thankful for the privilege that we don't deserve to be able to come to you in prayer. Father, it cost you your son. Jesus, it cost you your life. And you willingly and freely spilled your blood we might come today thanking you, praising you, petitioning thee. Take control of this service. 
that one that's unsaved, Lord, deal with them. That one that's wandering and drifting, help them to see their need. That one that's sick and needs a physical touch from the great physician. Lord, you're the healer and you're in the house this morning. So touch and heal as only you can. That one that's struggling, give grace. That's amazing and sufficient to meet and supply our every need. Get glory unto thyself. We know that it'll come from you. We'll give you the praise for you're the only one that's worthy of its due. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. You know, before we sing this song, um, I want to say something. First, I want to say that I'm thankful that the Lord saved my soul. But I was looking out for the veterans today. I watched everybody stand up. My heart just kind of got to thinking. You know, we don't know what the veterans have been through. You know, Brother Sid Warner out there in the seas, and those of us who are in the Army or the Navy or the Air Force or the Coast Guard, it doesn't matter. We, we don't know what individuals have been through. We know what we've been through personally. You know, and I can say I know there's a brother here this morning that I had the privilege to serve alongside for a long time. And I know what we went through. But I think about what my Lord and Savior went through. You know, as those who choose to serve their country and write an, a check up to death if necessary. Jesus did that and so much more. The veteran did it so we could have freedom to protect our way of life. Jesus did it so we could have eternity with him. So not only one day a year should we reflect on our veterans. And not only one day a week should we reflect on our Lord. But every day we should have a heart of thanks. A heart of humility and service to the Lord and Savior. Who paid it all so we could live free. Free of the chains that bind us. Free of the questions and the words of unknown. So you see, we praise the veteran for all they've done. And sometimes we forget the king. You know, there were times that the Lord was there for us. <laughs> Some of us didn't make it. But I don't wear the uniform anymore for this country. But I do serve this world for my Lord. Amen. So even if you weren't a veteran of the armed forces, you can still be a veteran of the army of God. Amen. So I challenge you, as we sing this song that the Lord had given us, what are you doing for kingdom business? Are you reflecting on the one who gave you eternity one day a week? Or do you want to have a heart to give back to the one who gave you everything? You see, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about him. And until we get ourselves out of the way and start serving the king, we're never going to truly understand all that he has for us. 
God bless you. And you can clap and be alive. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier.
Amen. Please don't forget uh, choir practice, 445, evening service at 6. And there's another note handed to me here. The last day to bring in your Operation Christmas child shoe boxes is next Sunday, November the 20th. So if you've taken a shoe box home, please fill it. Bring it back uh, this week. Thank you, Teresa Wright. So make sure you do that. Also, make sure you check the table out there and sign up to uh, decorate a Christmas table. We need uh, help in those areas. Make sure you read your uh, bulletin about when we decorate the church. And uh, if you can help us that morning, uh, that Monday morning, we'd certainly appreciate it. Ushers come at this time. We'll receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. I want you to notice this morning, <laughs> so you'll know I'm not an old fogey. Notice how these ushers are dressed. Some of you could take some hints on that. I remember when I was a boy, no offering was ever taken until our ushers looked as fine as they looked at are you responsible for that, are you? <laughs> Pray for us, Ray. Fun. Sam, wonderful job, as always. Well, I wasn't in the military either, but 
uh, I did have the chance to uh, go and see Normandy. Back in 2007, Claudia and I were able to go, and wow. What a view to see what our men, women, went through so that we may have what we have today, the freedom that we have. And I thank all the men and women. My father was in the military. He was in the Navy. His ship was blown up, um, and he was blessed to survive. Some didn't, as Sam said. And I am so thankful that I live in a country, the United States of America, that still believes in God. We're going to keep it going fast, so if you want to clap along, go right ahead. So that seems to be the theme this morning. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. And while we're in the thanking business, there is a couple in our church that are two undoubtedly 
of the best workers that I have ever witnessed in my pastorate. You just cannot beat our Liz Runyon. Can't beat them. Let's don't take the cleanliness and, and how nice the church looks week after week, you know. Most people help them, but there's a few that leave it in a mess. Guess who has to clean that up? And they do a great thank you, Runyons. Have you ever lost your glasses or your keys? or your important papers. Brenda, have you ever misplaced your cell phone? I don't know if she told you what she did or not. She probably did because she knew I'd tell it. You'll tell that when you get back, won't you? I said, be a good illustration. I got up to speak and spoke just a few minutes like I'm doing here. The phone started ringing. And I looked down there and it was Brenda's. And I said, Brenda, if that's not Jesus, turn it off. It must not have been Jesus because she turned it off. Next evening when we got ready to go to revive, I said, leave that here. Because you see, I'm getting old. Sometimes I think I've turned mine off and it's still on. Well, if you leave it to the house, you don't have to worry about it. Do you know something this morning? You can survive without your cell phone in the church service. There was a widow in the Bible that was hunting for a lost coin. It was a valuable coin. So she uh, swept the house seeking and searching for something valuable that she had lost. In the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 21st verse, Jesus is telling about something valuable. Matthew 6, 21. As you're looking that up, let me ask you a question. Where's your treasure? Do you, sir, ma'am, know where your treasure is? In Matthew 6, 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. first church that me and Brenda took and became pastor ran about 121. Scared me to death. We were kids. I was in my late 20s. She was in her middle 20s. And, and um, some of those people had been Christians longer than I'd been alive. And so uh, I thought, boy, I better get a pretty good, wise preacher in here for revival. So I called Big Bob Taylor 
And when he got there and he was preaching, I said, Reverend Taylor, I shared with him what fears I had. And he said, Phil, are you wanting advice? I said, desperately. He said, I'm going to tell you something. I hope you never forget. When you stand before any congregation, yours or any other, never will forget it. He said, preach to their heart. Preach to their heart. If you'll preach to their heart, the Holy Spirit will take that heart message and drill it in to them and deal with them. That's what I want to do this morning. We're winding down. The end is coming. If you're unsaved this morning, your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You were born in sin and conceived in iniquity. And that's why the Lord wants to give you a new heart. But before you can receive it, you have to find out where your treasure is. Now I'm going to preach to you a sermon this morning that you won't hear in most churches. Preachers are afraid to preach it. They're afraid people won't like it. They're afraid that many will take offense. And yet the Bible tells us to preach the truth. So I'm going to ask you this morning, where's your treasure? And just in case you're not sure, let me mention a few areas that I have seen in the 45 years that I've been a full-time pastor where people's treasure lies. First, and one of the biggest and one of the greatest, their treasure is in their money. Their treasure is in their money. That's what they live for. Money. That's their value. That's what they look at and possess with all watchfulness. You see, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. I don't know how many funerals that I have spoke at where families no longer spoke to each other Loved ones no longer had anything to do with each other. And it was all over money. They didn't get what they wanted, what they thought they should have gotten. And yet the Bible says, set your affections on things above and not on things below. Many and most people's treasure lies in money, even in the church. I know the statistics, but I'm not going to give them this morning because it would be embarrassing. 
to give the statistics of Hurricane First Church of the Nazarene of those who claim to be Christians and yet they don't tithe. They steal from God. They rob from God. And they do it on a weekly basis. And so I, I know that when that happens, those individuals love money more than they love the Lord. I don't want anything that doesn't belong to me. My brother gave me one of his cars this week and I drove it home and I said, big brother, I don't want that car if you can use it. I don't want to take that car from you. It's just sitting here, Phil. I don't need two cars. You've got 250,000 miles on your car. I want you to have that car. Many people's gods are in money. If I could, uh, I like to look and observe, don't you? How do you learn if you don't? And if I could look at your checkbooks, and you're not going to show me, don't worry. If you drop it out of your pocket, I might look at it. But <laughs> if I could look at your checkbook, or I just watch and see how you spend your money. I would know who your God is. See, I, I can't figure out if a person can't afford to tithe how they can have a new automobile. Wear designer clothes. Oh, blessed quiet. What are you trying to say, preacher? There was a man and his wife. Their name was Ananias and Sapphira. They pledged a certain amount to give to the church. It was growing. God was blessing. It takes money to grow. They sold their land, but you know, they talked it over and said, man, this is too much money to give all of it to the church. Let's just give them some and we'll keep back a part of it for ourselves. So that's what they did. When they brought their offering to the preacher, he said, is this what you sold the land for? And then I said, yep, that's it. And Peter looked at him and said, Ananias, you've not lied to me, but you've just lied to God. And can you believe it? He fell down dead. If that still happened today, we'd have bodies laying all over these chairs. And they carried him out and buried him. His wife comes trotting in and he said, uh, do you sell the land for so much? Promise to give the money to the church? Yep. Not knowing that three hours before that, her husband had died. Pop, she fell dead. Not because they were robbing Peter. It was much more serious than that. They were robbing God. 
Some preachers have told you because you've told me they did. Well, I asked, I've got a relative that's a preacher. And he said you shouldn't look at them, Reverend Bauer. That's none of your business what we give to God. I said it shouldn't bother you as long as you're tithing. You know the ones that bothers? The ones that are not doing what they should be doing. It's like a guy that was drunk and the preacher was praying for him and said, Lord, I just pray you'd sober this man up and save this old drunk. He grabbed a hold of the preacher's pants leg and said, Preacher, don't tell him I'm drunk. Don't you think God knows where you're at? As far as your money's concerned. Number two, where is your treasure? If it's not in money, many have their treasure in material things. Their house, their automobile, their possessions. They've worked hard. They've worked all their life. And Jesus said, man's life consists not in the things that he possesses. And yet, we value material things more than we do our own families. Why is that? Is there any earthly possession that is worth as much as your family. We brought nothing into this world and we're going to leave that way. We're going to carry nothing out. The Lord makes a adamant statement when he says you can't serve God and mammon. You'll hate the one, love the other, cling to the one, and despise the other. You can't serve two masters. And yet, many people work a lifetime for material things in areas that bring their early death. But they want that new home. They want that new car. One uh, lady my brother in my brother's family had put her family in straits because she wanted a home that they couldn't afford. And my brother called her out on it and said, why do you want that so much? You and your husband can't afford that. You know what she told him? Well, Ray, I have a certain image that I have to keep up. And that image caused her company to go out of business and file bankruptcy. Where's your treasure? Is it in money? Is it in material things? The rich young ruler, when he said, Lord, I want to make sure I get to heaven. Well, I do too, don't you? He said, what do I have to do to have eternal life? Jesus said, it's really simple. Just keep the commandments. Oh, he smiled and he said, well, I've been trying to do that from my youth. 
And the Lord, who looks not at the outward appearance, but he looks on the heart, looked into his heart, and here's what he said. One thing you're lacking. Go sell your material possessions. Give them to the poor and come and follow me. He dropped his head for he had great possessions and they had him. And he went away sorrowful. Many today are not serving the Lord because of money, because of material things. Can I give you another one? Myself. Myself. I'm selfish. I want people to take care of me. I want everything done for me. Now, Brenda's dad's sick, and he can't help it. He's very sick. But Brenda's mom has babied him to such an extent that he can't do anything for himself. He expects her to do it. He expects her to get it, and she does. She does. And Brenda's like that with me. She'd get whatever I wanted her to. But I caught her in the back room this week. And I have a tendency to be outspoken. And I said, Greenberry, you're going to kill Myrtle if you don't start doing some things for yourself. I got his attention. I said, let me tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to kill her. And then you know where you're going to go? To a nursing home. It won't matter whether you like it or not. Your boys won't keep you. Because their wives won't let them. So you better start helping mom. Well, didn't do no good. I should have just been quiet because he's sick. But when you care only for yourself across the years, you die that way. And if you'd be honest, this morning if you're here and you're not saved one of these three things are keeping you from being saved I have yet to see a happy person that's selfish who doesn't give to others. I, me, myself, and I. Yet Jesus said, deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow me. Remember what the rich fool said? Fill these barns full. Couldn't get nothing else in them. He was in a quandary as to what to do. So rather than share that with others, he said, I'll tear down these barns and build bigger. And then I'll say to myself, Self, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, be merry. And the Lord looked at him and said, you're a fool. 
you're going to die tonight. And then whose shall these things be? Where's your treasure? I hope it's in the master. See, if it's in the master, money and material things and, and selfishness is not controlling you. Jesus is. You have made the change and you're seeking first the kingdom of God. As a song leader and musicians come, the Bible says love God with all of your heart soul, mind, body, and strength. When the disciples started following the Lord, they forsook all and followed Him. In fact, the Lord said, He that forsaketh not all cannot be my disciple. We've got so many people on Sunday morning that play church and hold on to material things or, or their money or their selfishness, what would happen in your life if you decided this morning that you were going to make Jesus Christ the master of your life. Shall we stand? Heavenly Father, we're going to sing in a moment as you examine our life. As you look at our money situation, our material possessions, as you look inside and really see us, help us to know where our treasure lies. And Lord, if it's not you, it can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing. Come on. He's waiting to come in. Why don't you let him come in? Why don't you just throw up the white flag? I'm not going to be my boss anymore. I'm turning it over to him. Time after time, the Lord's spoken to me about my money about my material possessions, about myself, and I've never let loose. I've never let go. I've never gave the Lord complete control. Oh, how He wants to come in. One more time. only takes a step of honesty of truthfulness if you're coming you need to start now within your heart he'll abide after time he's doing again this morning see if you're willing Heavenly Father, thank you 
for the convicting power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the truth of God's Word. May we take it and appropriate and apply it not to someone else's life, but to ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shake hands with everyone. You're dismissed.